What's up, YouTube? Booking Primer here. Primer Rage to deliver you our week 12 team builder here in NPBF season 13. And this is going to be our last team builder for NPBF this season as we are not making playoffs. We are mathematically eliminated from playoffs as of our loss to Liam. We had a slim chance if we won out uh, and other people lost out. Uh, and such not. We still had a, a slight chance to make it, but unfortunately, due to our loss last week, we are eliminated from playoffs for the first time in our entire uh, tenure with the NPBF. So that is heartbreaking, to say the least, but um, normally in these situations, I start to meme uh, for the remainder of the season. However, uh, out of respect for my opponent, um, who beat me at the beginning of the season, I am going to be taking this 100% seriously because I I got I got it. I gotta give I gotta give him my best. I gotta give him my best. And that is gonna be Anthony and the Windy City Bolt Strikers. Uh, he did beat us week three in our initial divisional match, so this is the rematch, and we are going to try to hopefully pick up the dub here. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one for sure. His team is terrifying, but uh, we're gonna give it our best shot. His team consists of Galarian Darmanitan, Rotom Wash, Nidoking, King, Zygarde ten percent. Calarian Rapidash, Pangoro, Gothitelle, Heatran, Zarud, Scyther, and Raichu. So, uh, genuinely don't remember off the top of my head what all was on his team last time. I don't believe he made any significant changes. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he made some, but I don't believe he made anything like super crazy. Um, but his team is terrifying. His team is utterly terrifying. Um, just with the Galarian Darm right there, that's that's a problem. That's a huge problem. So we gotta try to beat that thing as fast as we possibly can. And uh, then on top of that, he also has things like the Zygarde and Nido King that hit incredibly hard. Uh, the Pangoro, which hits like a truck. Uh, the Gothitel, which can be annoying. Heatran with its potential trapping ability. Zarude, which can also be a nuisance. Uh, all these mods can be very problematic, and I am not looking forward to dealing with most of them. But we're going to do our very best here in this matchup to uh, hopefully pick up a dub. And to start that off, we have the first of what I'm dubbing the Body Press Boys uh, this week. First of those is going to be Budweiser the Mudsdale. Fully specially defensive with the Yanchi Berry, Body Press, Iron Defense, Sleep Talk, and Rest. Uh, this kind of set can literally win a game against most teams. Uh, being fully spadef is going to be helpful. So it lets us tank. Uh, it could let us tank a hydro pump from Rotom. It could let us tank uh, any special move from the Nidoking. It could help us with the Heatran. Yeah, a lot of mons can help us with the Raichu's too. Uh, that's also an option. Uh, stamina will allow us to get those defense boosts when we get hit, which is always nice. And then we do have, just have body press and iron defense to wreck people with. Um, the Ashi Berry allows us to tank a hit from Darm and then just kill it back with body press after we get the stamina boost, which is really sick. Uh, and then, uh, but honestly, if we can get like an iron defense up earlier on, that's even more preferred. Uh, because then that allows us to just guarantee just body press and break through whatever we want. Because no matter what, we're going to be slower than most things on their team. So we have to take a hit before they can uh, do anything back to us. So, or if we do anything back to them. So we'll already be at plus two. They'll hit us, we'll go to plus three, and we will nuke whatever is in front of us. That is pretty much the whole purpose of Mudsdale, is to just nuke whatever is in front of it. And break and, and break for a little while in the team once the battle starts. Obviously, there's mons that wall this set pretty effectively. Galarian Rapidash is one of them. Um, Gothitelle does, uh, you know, can shoot the hit for a little while unless we get to like plus six. And of course, there is the Scyther, which does four times resist uh, the body press as well. But if those mons do not show up. <sighs> Excuse me. This Mosdale has potential to do some crazy work in this matchup. The other body press boy is going to be Derp the Slowbro. 
184 HP, 252 defense with bold nature, and 72 and 2 spadef with the assault vest. The 72 spadef with assault vest uh, allows us to, I believe, not get to a KO by Raichu or Nidoking. I believe it's Nidoking. I think Nidoking makes more sense. I don't remember which one it was. But the HP and, and Spadef investment allows us to not get too KO'd by something. Uh, we have Scald, Body Press, Counter, and Ice Beam. Uh, Scald, obviously, for stab purposes. Uh, getting burns on things will be nice. Plus, he has uh, only one or two water resists on his team. Rotom, which doesn't appreciate the, the burn because it will counteract its potential leftovers. And the Zarud, which doesn't appreciate a burn because it is, you know, a more physical attacker. So, either you know, option will be nice. Uh, we have the Body Press. Max Defense Body Press absolutely tears through a lot of mons of this team. Obviously, it lets us break through Darm. Obviously, it, it breaks through things like Pangoro as well. Uh, is Heatran. You know, all that kind of stuff. Counter is going to be fun. Counter is going to be fun because uh, this is going to be my way of utilizing Darm against him. For example, like, if I'm out against Darm, he can just click U-turn, right? He just clicks U-turn. Smacks me for big damage. Because even though I'm really defensive, I still take big damage from a Gorilla Tactics U-turn, right? I click Counter. Whatever he goes into is getting smacked hard, if not O-code. So, counter is going to be really, really huge here. This also allows me to kind of 1v1 the Zygarde no matter what. Um, granted, we do have the Ice Beam, so we're pretty fine there. Uh, this allows us to beat the Pangoro because we actually do not die to a knockoff from full. So we can counter and kill that thing immediately. Uh, this thing just this thing really, really wrecks a lot of his team. So, I uh, really hope that the Slowbro is going to be able to put in some work. Next up, we have Hefner, the Low Pony with the Leftovers and Limber ability. Uh, fake Out, Close Combat, Ice Punch, and U-Turn. Just max speed, max attack. Uh, somewhat offensive Low Pony. Fake Out is just good for that extra little bit of chip damage. Close combat is for the Darm slash Pangoro slash Hedron slash Zerud. Uh, close combat hits a lot of his team pretty hard. Uh, U turns for momentum, ice punches for the Zygarde. I just went max speed because that allows us to speed time with Zerud. Uh, we can u get a U turn off on that Zerud, that'll be really good. Uh, I went with Limber because uh, I could see like Nuzzle being brought on the Raichu potentially, um, as well as like Galair on Zygarde. Uh, or just T-Wave, or on, on Rotom, so just gives me options for, for that as well. Uh, just kind of wanted to bring Low Pony for the extra chip this week with the fake outs. Um, just felt like that could be really useful. Next up we have Lost Vein, the Aegislash, and this is going to be a very important week for Lost Vein because this thing needs to put in some work here. We have the Culverberry. Stance change ability, of course. Shadow Ball, Shadow Sneak, Close Combat, and King Shield. King Shield, obviously, the switch back into forms. Uh, block a physical attack that makes contact, and we get to wreck the opponent, thanks to that. Uh, my opponent has two resists to Shadow Ball. Two. That is Zerud and Pangoro. With the Culverberry, we guaranteed live... A hit from both. Okay. We're going to have to scout on Pangoro's part, obviously, because um, Pangoro could be scarfed. Uh, but we are speed crept to outspeed and max speed Pangoro. So, if, say Pangoro comes in, takes a Shadow Ball from us, we can kill it back with a close combat afterwards. And we should outspeed it. Which is great. Uh, However, in the Zerud situation, Zerud takes a Shadow Ball, we have to King Shield, and then we can close combat afterwards. 
Uh, I do believe that it needs a little bit of extra chip, but uh, before that, but uh, obviously we'll we'll know in the battle. Uh, we are max special attack, so our shadow balls will be hitting incredibly hard. Everything on this team does not appreciate to take the shadow ball uh, either, so that's pretty nice for us. Uh, shadow sneak is just to kind of help chip things down a little bit later in the game if things have gotten worn down a decent amount. Uh, but yeah, this thing just kind of click Shadow Ball and hopefully just win. That's pretty much the goal. Um, next up, we have Imposter the Laryntus, and this set is devious. So this set only really works if Rotom comes. And the reason for that is... Um, Reach 208? No, I only hit 207. The reason for that is I can see Rotom being used as a defogger because looking at his team, he only has Rotom or Scyther as hazard removal. I think Rotom would be his defogger. Lorantis switches into Rotom incredibly well. If we can switch in on a defog, we get an evasion boost. It's a way around the evasion clause. And so then we sub up in front of the Rotom with our leftovers and stuff, so we're getting constant recovery. And we have sub Leaf Storm Superpower Giga Drain with a hasty nature. So we have, the speed allows us to outspeed non speed invested Heatran and anything that would be slower than that. But the evasion boost is what I'm really focusing on because not a lot of things on this team have moves that ignore um, have moves that ignore evasion so this could very well make it so that he can't touch my Lorantis and I can just spam things like Leaf Storm get myself boosted up I have superpower which allows me to beat down the heat train if it tries to give me problems and I can just boost up and get to the plus six special attack. I have Giga Drain for recovery and superpower to break through the things that resist my grass moves. This thing can really just win. The, like Obviously if Scyther's there, it walls this whole set. So this set can't work if Scyther is there. I need to get rid of Scyther ASAP. But if it's not, this thing can just win. So hopefully that situation can take place and that'll be really fun. Uh, we'll see. We'll give it our best shot, but uh, this is like our for fun set, but like still at the same time kind of serious. And our last one, in order to force those de force that defog, we have the champion, the Robombi, Focus Ash, Shield Dust, Max Special Attack, 184 Speed, Timid Nature. This is to outspeed Zygarde, and everything's lower. Uh, the rest goes in HP. Sticky Web, Moonblast, Bug Buzz, and Psychic. Very plainly, uh, this thing just hits everything on his team for, for decent damage, except for the Heatran, which is fine. Um, we don't need to hit Heatran with this thing. Not a big deal, not important. Um, this thing's main goal is to just set up Sticky Webs and force the Rotom to go for Defog. Because if it forces the Rotom to go for Defog, that means we get our Lorantis in, we get our Lorantis in on that defog, and then all hell breaks loose for our boy, Anthony. So, fingers crossed we can get that plan to work, but that's literally all this thing's here for, is to get up sticky webs. If we can keep it around and get up sticky webs after the Rotom's gone, that's even better. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this team builder. Uh, you'll see the battle tomorrow. But until next time, I'm Poke Primer. Signing off.